in Buena Park, California, at the First Southern Baptist Church and Messianic Congregation, and in the studios of the Wiley Drake Show. Now, we're going to go up in just a moment. Uh, we are only on television right now, but in just a moment, we're going up on uh, Crusade Radio. So hang on. And remember, I have trouble dialing and talking at the same time, so if I quit talking, it's not because I don't have anything to say. It's because I'm dialing. And that says Crusade Radio, and it should be going up. And back in the old days on TV, Miss Lily Tomlin used to say, one ringy-dingy, two ringy-dingies, and now we're up live on Crusade Radio, and we're going to hit the merge call button, and that means we are live on the communications channel of the Wiley Drake Show. By the way, we have uh, recently initiated for many years, since back in 2000, we've had this program, but a part of our program has been what we call Telephonic Prayer Meeting. Now, we have recently changed the name of that to include what I call Communications Channel. Many of you know me. I'm very proud of the fact that Ronald Reagan, the great communicator, signed my bachelor's degree diploma from California State University at Long Beach. It was called Cal State in those days, Cal State College. But uh, my degree is in communications, and that's what we're trying to do here. When I say what we are trying to do, I'm going to have some new we on with me. They've been on before, one of them at least. But uh, when I say we, I say the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. We started that in the year 2000. We've been fighting. We've been going to D.C. every month uh, to do what we can to knock on doors and to say, you've got us in trouble. You've got to get us out. Well, we haven't been very successful, to be honest. We've been pushing. We've been fighting. And then recently I came in contact with a colonel, full, decorated, retired Colonel Harry Riley, who has an organization called Operation American Spring. We're working with him on that. We went to D.C. We wish we'd have had more people. Uh, we still have people on the ground there. We're trying to get Barry Satoro out of the White House. And we're trying to get the rest of those unlawful, ungodly people out. Now, I'm going to share with you, uh, we got a caller calling in. Let's see who this is. Good morning and welcome to the Wiley Drake Show. You're live on television and radio. If you want to talk to me personally, you'll have to call back after the top of the hour. However, if you want to be on the show, you're live on the air right now. Go ahead. Well, give us that news, brother. I have uh, in here with me a gentleman by the name of Scott and a gentleman by the name of Lawrence, and uh, we're going to be talking about American Revolution, AR2, and we're also going to be talking about the American Eagle Alliance. So tell us your report, my brother. Well, yes, I want to report, uh, many of your listeners will remember that uh, the Christian Alliance of America and the Ohio Christian Alliance have been on this program before talking about the D-Day Landing Prayer Act that's been moving through Congress the last few years. Well, we have uh, tremendous news. I wanted to call you last week to let you know about what happened on June 5th. You may have already talked about it, and that is the measure passed by unanimous consent in the U.S. Senate on June 5th on the eve of the 70th anniversary of the D-Day Landing. Now, brother let, me, let me, brother, let me stop you just for a minute. That was not the Senate. That was the House, wasn't it? Signage, 
expansion. Here's the big news, of course. The last couple of years, as you know, we got it passed through the House two years ago in, uh, by a vote of 3, 6, to 26, but time ran out. We didn't get it through the Senate that year. That was the presidential year. Uh, Senator Reid wasn't letting anything go through. But this time, the sponsors, uh, Senator Rob Portman from Ohio, he's my senator, and Senator Landrieu of Louisiana, they moved on the floor on June 5th on the anniversary of the D-Day landings, uh, and they went for unanimous consent. Well, as you know, that's like a Hail Mary pass politically. You have to have a complete agreement in the U.S. Senate. Well, praise God, I want to tell you, it passed by unanimous consent. The senator called me from the floor. Uh, first of all, that he was going to do it, we got our prayer network going, had everybody praying, and he called back within the hour. He said, Chris, I have glorious news. The bill passed by unanimous consent. Well, now it's over in the House today, and so when it only took one week, about eight days for them to take it up, and so we're very happy about that. And so it is on the schedule for this evening, so we would like everybody to pray, one, and, of course, call your congressman and urge them to support S-1044, the World War II Memorial Prayer Act. Well, what will this do? We'll add FDR's D-Day landing prayer in its entirety at the World War II Memorial in Washington, uh, D.C. Now, of course, why this is important is because that memorial is a wonderful, fitting tribute to the 16 million Americans that served us in World War II, but it doesn't have any scripture verse, reference of God, or prayer anywhere on it, which is unique in Washington, Pastor, as you know, because if you go to the U.S. Capitol, the Library of Congress, Washington Monument, Lincoln Memorial, Jefferson Memorial, the list is endless. They all have some kind of scripture verse, prayer, or reference to God uh, inscribed somewhere on them. And it's really uh, a disservice to these World War II veterans who fought against the tyranny uh, and oppression against uh, religious freedom to not have any reference to God whatsoever. So when we told these generations, the World War II generation, that what we were wanting to do with this, they said, they looked at me and they said, young man, get it done. Well, I like two things about that. One, being called a young man, and two, <laughs> being commissioned by the greatest generation. So good and glorious news by this evening. We should have great news that it's passed both chambers and on to the president. See how he could not sign it when it's got unanimous consent in the Senate. It's going to have overwhelming support in the House. But, of course, we would like everyone to call again. Let me give you that number, 202-221-3121. Call your congressman and urge them to support S-1044, the World War II Memorial Prayer Act. Well, brother, thank you for that report, and we certainly appreciate you being a, a part of the Wiley Drake Show, and we're going to be talking about that very thing. We'd already mentioned we were going to talk about it today. Uh, we will open. We have what we call a... Uh, communications channel, and it's my understanding the vote will be about 6 p.m. tonight, uh, D.C. time. Is that right? That's right. That's, that's on the schedule, and uh, that will be this evening, so people have time to call all afternoon. I want to also give them a website they can go to, caamerica.org, and there's a couple of things. If they'd like to make a contribution, we certainly could use their support. And, uh, Pastor, I want to thank you. Over the last couple of years, you've had me come on, talk about this issue. You've asked your people to phone, write letters, sign the petition. All of that has helped us to get us where we are today. And, again, this is going to be a great opportunity to uh, honor God and honor our uh, armed forces at the memorial. And uh, what we're planning on doing is having a, uh, a service down there when an honor flight comes in. Senator Portman's coming down with Senator Landrieu and Congressman Johnson, some of the other bill sponsors, will thank those veterans, shake their hand, thank them for their service, and have a little ceremony about uh, the inclusion of this prayer at the memorial. Then, of course, it's the uh, uh, Department of Land Management is the one who's uh, parks and land management. They're the ones who are going to uh, do the layout as to where it's going to be actually placed. But uh, we're trusting God that they're going to get a, give it a fitting uh, position at the memorial so that veteran visitors and these young people especially can come and read this prayer and be moved by it because Amen. it is a really wonderful historical presidential prayer that generations to come need not to forget this but to remember what sacrifices were made on their behalf. Amen. Well, brother, we thank you so much. I was under the wrong impression, obviously. I thought it had already passed the Senate, I mean the House, and was going to the Senate today for vote. But I guess I got that reversed. Well, that's understandable because most things do pass the House first and go to the Senate. And so and that's what, in fact, we were really surprised. The senator's office called me about 3 in the afternoon on June 5th. I'd actually wanted to be in Normandy this year, of course, for the 70th anniversary. Things uh, actually didn't work out that way. I actually lost my father, who was a World War II veteran, in January. And uh, my father-in-law died.
tonight on Christmas night, also World War II generation uh, veteran. And so we've kind of been doing some things personally, uh, helping family and all. And um, this bill passed by, in the committee in November, but nothing was said whatsoever as to its movement in the Senate. Then I got that call by the senator's staff a half an hour later. Senator Portman called me from the Senate floor and said, Chris, I'm going to try a unanimous consent. I said, Senator, we're going to have everybody praying. He said, I need those prayers. He called back within the hour and saying it had passed by unanimous consent. So we're so thankful and appreciative, and I wanted to let all your listeners know and thank them personally. And, Pastor, thank you for your support through this whole uh, uh, this whole process. We're going to be able to honor those veterans. Well, thank you so much. And, Brother, uh, please keep me posted. We would love to... Uh, uh, be there to cover that event at the memorial in Washington, D.C. And as Absolutely. you know, we come to D.C. at least once a month. Uh, I'm going to be in Gettysburg on July the 4th. Uh, we're going to be celebrating that great battlefield uh, there for racial reconciliation. But please keep me posted. Please let me know uh, what's going on. And uh, we will open today, I've already said to our folk, Today at 3.15, ladies and gentlemen, which are at 3 o'clock, excuse me, at 3 p.m. California time, that will be 6 p.m. D.C. time, we will open our communications channel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening or watching us on television right now and you want to join us at 3 o'clock California time, 6 o'clock D.C. time, call this telephone number. 712-432-1690. That's 712-432-1690. And they'll ask you for an access code. Put in your access code, 399-430-POUND. If you call that number at 6 p.m., we will be live on the air on communications channel here on The Wiley Drake Show. You can pray with us, you can pray for us, or you can just listen in, whatever you'd like to do. So at 3 p.m. California time, 6 p.m. D.C. time, call 712-432-1690. Put in your access code 399-430-POUND and join us and be with us. Uh, we'll also be back on again at 8 o'clock tonight. And, brother, we would love to have you call us back at 8 o'clock your time and be on the live show as well at that same number. What, what's that number that we call? Well, what, what did you did you call in just now on the 714 number? Uh, I called in on the um, 712-1690 number. Yeah, okay, that's the number to call in on, but you do have to put in your access code to access that line. And uh, that will be, we'll be on, uh, actually, that's called the communication line. That will be on at 6 o'clock D.C. time. And we'd love to hear from you then. And then we'll either keep it open or reopen it at 8 o'clock for our live television and radio show. Right now, what you've just told us, you told the whole world on Internet television through the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C.'s television network and crusade radio network out here in california but it goes literally around the world so brother keep us posted let me give you my email address and i don't mind putting it out on the air to everybody but if you would send me your cell phone number uh, by my email i would appreciate it and that email is wiley wiley w-i-l-e-y W-I-L-E-Y, Wiley Wiley, at A-T-T dot net. And, brother, thank you, and we appreciate you being our correspondent. Give that website again, would you please? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, the Christian Alliance of America website. That's C-A-America dot O-R-G. Uh, folks can go there. They can still sign the petition. Also, uh, click on a link to see the video uh, and hear the audio of the prayer that the president prayed in the morning of the D-Day landings and uh, may contact us with us that way. And, of course, everyone calling their congressman today, 202-224-3121. Pastor, thank you so much, and God bless you. Thank
Thank you, brother. Send me an email with your cell phone number so we can keep in touch. God bless you. Keep up the good work, and have a great day. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. As usual, I'm backwards. I told these guys a backwards story earlier. I thought it had passed the House unanimously, and then it was going to the Senate. But evidently, from what he said, it went through the Senate unanimously, which blows me away. And uh, anything unanimous in D.C. is absolutely uh, just blows me away. And uh, maybe I'm skeptical. I've been traveling there since 2000. We started, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who maybe are watching or listening for the first time, we started the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C., January of 2000. And we've been going back there every month, at least once a month, ever since then. Uh, we're now on crusaderadio.com. Uh, by the way, this show today uh, will be archived, and if you want to come back and watch it later or you miss part of it, you can always come back to our archives. The way you get to our show, there's two ways you can get to our show. The first, uh, most important way is you, wherever you can download emails, wherever you can get on the Internet, you can get our show. Our show can be received two ways. Number one, you just simply go on your laptop, on your iPad, your iPhone, wherever you go, and go to www.thewileydrakeshow.com. Now, you got to spell the right. You also got to spell Wiley right. It's W-I-L-E-Y, but it's thewileydrakeshow.com. You can go there. Now, if your iPad or your iPhone says this device can't download that, that happens once in a great while, then just simply go to another website called U, the letter U, stream, ustream.tv. That's where it's on, ustream.tv. And then you put in The Wiley Drake Show, and you will get it there. So I have people call all the time and say, well, I tried to get it, and it wouldn't come in on my laptop, or it wouldn't come in on my iPad, it wouldn't come in on my iPhone. Well, that's not our fault, folks. That's your fault. <laughs> but rather than criticize you, I'm going to give you two options. One option, www.thewileydrakeshow.com, the old-fashioned way. And then the second way, if you have trouble, go to U, the letter U, stream.tv. Up at the top, there'll be a search box. Put in the Wiley Drake Show, and voila, you'll get it live. Now, later, let's say two hours from now, three hours from now, you want to watch this show again, you simply go back on there and hit archive, and voila, the top one will be the very last one. We archive them. We also put them on YouTube, so you can find the Wiley Drake Show on YouTube as well. Now, uh, as everybody knows this show, first of all, we have a great deal of pride in the fact that everybody else that has a television show, whether it's Rush or Hannity or whoever it is, they tell you they take all calls. They lie. You call Rush Limbaugh and you'll see. You'll get put on hold. They'll ask you what you want to talk about. And if what you're wanting to talk about and what they're wanting to talk about is the same, then they'll put you through. Otherwise, they'll leave you on hold for 45 minutes. They lie. They do not have open line. Well, folks, you just experienced open line. This line is open to Crusade Radio. This line is open through Congressional Prayer Conference. And this man called us on the phone, and I didn't screen the call. Notice I didn't ask who he was or why he was. We do not screen our calls. So if you want to call in, I don't care whether you agree with me or not. I hope you do. Most people do. And almost everybody has a right to be wrong. But if you want to call in on this show, we do not screen our calls. We don't screen our calls just because we have famous guests in the studio with us like we do today. <laughs> but anyway, we do not screen our calls. If you would like to call us during the next hour, the rest of this hour, you can call us on 712-432-1690. It will ask you to identify yourself. You do not have to do that. If you want to remain anonymous, that's okay. We'll ask you, but if you don't want to, just skip that. But you do have to put in your access code because that's the only way to get in through the system. Call 712-432-1690. It will say, please identify yourself and put in your access code. 
skip the identify yourself if you want to, but you got to put this access code in, 399-430-POUND. If one of these guests that's going to be talking in a minute says something that you like, call them and tell them. If they say something you don't like, call them and tell them. All you got to do is call that number and put in that access code, and you will be on the air with us on the communications channel literally around the world. Now then, I am going to move to a different segment of the program because uh, we haven't gotten any more calls. This card says, Welcome to the Second American Revolution, AR2. And I have with me Lawrence Hebron. Lawrence has written a book called AR2, Handbook for the Second American Revolution. I don't know about you, but a friend of mine down in uh, Branson, Missouri, wrote a song, and uh, he talks about, in that song, he says something about, I think old Yankee Doodle needs to get back up on his pony. Mm. And I think that's what we're talking about here. Lawrence Hebron, welcome. Thank you. Show. Thank you, Dr. And who's this guy over here? This is Scott Nelson. He is an integral part of what we're working on to uh, rebuild uh, America the Great. Amen. We want to rebuild America. Ladies and gentlemen, a number of years ago, about 25 years ago, uh, I went to Florida to meet with a man who became my mentor, and he is now in heaven. But his name was Dr. D. James Kennedy. And Dr. D. James Kennedy had an organization called Reclaiming America. Great organization, did a great deal of work in Washington, D.C. Unfortunately, he's like a lot of us. He became an old man and uh, went home to be with the Lord. But uh, we're still trying to reclaim America. And anytime I find anyone that is in the business or wanting to do that, I want to be a part of it. As you just heard me tell this guy, I want to be a part. When they put that prayer, and by the way, I'm a preacher. That's my first hat. That's my first job. Uh, I'm secondly a politician. I was a candidate for second or for vice presidency of the United States in 2008 uh, with Dr. Alan Keyes, and in 2012 I ran for president of the United States. So I are a politician. Didn't win obviously, but we gave them a good run for their money. But I am first and foremost a preacher. And uh, when I read that prayer that our president prayed before America on the radio. That was back in the old days when all you could do is get on radio, no TV. But when he prayed that prayer on radio for the whole world to hear, as a pastor, I was very envious. I thought, boy, I wish I could have worded a prayer like that. And he wasn't even a preacher. He was the president of the United States. We've come a long way, brother. Yeah. And we need to get back to the basics. And I believe one of the ways we can, folks, Go to the website. Tell us the website, please. It's AEA, the number four, USA.com. So AEA, it stands for American Eagle Alliance. So AEA, the number four, USA.com. All right, brother, um, I got some information today. I'm going I'm to share this and then I want to wire you guys in on this. A friend of mine is also a journalist. His name is Bill Wilson. He said, while the occupant of the Oval Office and his minions are trying to guide the national discussion on illegal immigration toward the heartstrings of orphan children, the deliberate invasion of the United States is being allowed. Along with children come terrorists, as confirmed by Texas Governor Rick Perry, gang members, drug cartels, operatives, and a host of other male violent human beings that wish to see America pilfered. I don't want to see America pilfered. Lawrence Hebron, what can we do? You've given us a website here, AEA, the number four, USA.com. There is a handbook called A New Beginning for Old Glory. This book, and folks, if you want to see this book, and by the way, let me tell you something. I'm going to have Lawrence tell you how to get the book, but I want to give you an incentive to get the book. If you get this book and you read it, Got to read it. If you call my producer, Bob Bosworth, and say, I got the book, AR2, and I want to come on your show and talk about it. He's an old man like me and stubborn, and he'll say, did you read the book? And if you say, no, but I have it and I want to talk about it, he'll say, no, call back after you read the book. 
We don't want people coming on here just to say, I saw it in the title and I don't like it, or I do like it for that matter. But we want you to get the book, read the book, and if you get the book and read the book, we'll give you free time on the Wiley Drake Show. All you got to do is call my scheduler, Bob Bosworth, at 714-699-8657. Call Bob up and say, hey, Bob, uh, my name is, you don't have to give him your name if you don't want to, but I want to talk about AR2 Handbook for the Second American Revolution, written by Lawrence Paul Hebron. Bob will say, have you read it? And if you say yes, then he'll schedule you to be on the Wiley Drake Show, and we'll give you a chance to give your book report. Now, Lawrence, AR2, Second American Revolution, what are our readers going to find when they go to that book? Well, one of the things we need to keep in mind right now is a lot of people in the United States believe that we are facing one of the gravest crises in our history. And some people might think that's a bit of an exaggeration. We had the revolution, we had the Civil War, we had two world wars, we've had a Great Recession, a Great Depression. Why is this crisis now greater possibly than all of those? Well, it's not because of the magnitude of the problem. It's because of the shortage of assets that we have to solve that problem. I mean, throughout our history, we have had two great resources. One has been the American spirit, and the other one has been God himself. And yet in recent decades, we have been doing just about everything we can to undermine and destroy those two assets or to remove them from our public conversation. That's why we're in so much danger right now. But what this book does is it acknowledges the gravity of the problem that we're facing. And it acknowledges that what we have been doing in the past has not been working. I think we in the patriot community know exactly what needs to be done. We need to return to those core documents, those core values, and those core institutions that made us great in the first place. And among those, are we talking about, remember the alphabet, just forget A, B, C, D, the Bible, the Constitution, the Declaration. We need to get back to the principles established in those documents. So we in the patriot community know exactly what needs to be done. The problem is our tactics stink, mm. and they have stunk to high heaven yeah. for decades now. I mean, think about it. Even the best of us, those of us who are most active, will do maybe some of these things. We might read dozens of books. We'll listen to scores of commentators. We'll attend hundreds of meetings. We'll organize thousands of different groups. We'll organize tens of thousands of protest activities, mm -hmm. write up hundreds of thousands of protest placards, make millions of phone calls and tens of millions of emails and letters. And what has it gotten us? Precious little. Yeah, absolutely. The situation continues to grow worse and worse and worse. We need to do something different, and that's what this book is all about. Basically, there's thousands of things that we can do, but we only have three options. Option one, we can quit. We can surrender. We can say, you know what, it's been a good run, but all good things must come to an end. We've had 238 years. Maybe it's just time for us to start watching the prepper shows, buy some property in the hinterland, plant some seeds, dig some wells, and wait for the end to come. Second option, we can keep doing what we've been doing. But if we keep doing what we've been doing, won't we keep getting what we've been getting? Mm -hmm. And isn't that why we're in the trouble we're in? That's right. There's a quote often attributed to Einstein. I don't know if that's true or not, but somebody said, it's very true, that insanity is defined as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, the first two options are basically this. We quit or we're crazy. There is a third option, and the third option is to do something radically different. Amen. And that's what this book talks about. In a nutshell, we will show you how we can fight and win the second American Revolution in less time than it took to win the first without taking over the White House, the Congress, the Supreme Court, or any constitutional amendments. That, in a nutshell, is what it's all about. And then the book, of course, describes why we need to do that and how we can do it. Well, we certainly want to do that. Um, one of the greatest experiences in my life have been since the year 2000. We're now 14 years now. Uh, I've had the opportunity to be in Washington, D.C. at least once a month, sometimes twice or three times a month. And I've gone to D.C. and I've loved D.C. and I love D.C. I know a lot of people hate D.C., but I love D.C. I love to be there because of the action. But in all honesty, as I look back over we started the Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. By the way, folks, if you want to go to our website, you can find it at Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, You'll see my picture. You'll also see my co-chairman's picture. 
My co-chairman is a man by the name of Clyde Rivers. Clyde Rivers is an American. He was born and raised in this country, and he is ethnically an African-American. But he is also the ambassador for the African country of Burundi. And so he works very closely with me as my co-chairman. We used to have, when we first started, the fellow that founded the organization was a president and I was a vice president. Well, I didn't like those terms and when my president went home to be with the Lord and I took over, I said, we're going to change the terminology. We're going to call it chairman and co-chairman. Dr. Clyde Rivers is my co-chairman. Go to Congressional Prayer Conference of Washington, D.C. dot org and you'll find out more about us. But over, over the years, We've done the best we've known how to do. We've knocked on doors. We've held congressmen and senators accountable. We've held staff accountable. I guarantee you, if you go on the Hill, and I'm not saying this to brag, folks, but I just say it to illustrate. If you go on the Hill and walk into any congressman's office or any senator's office and say to the youngest secretary or the youngest aide or to the congressman or senator themselves, do you know Wiley Drake? I guarantee you they'll say, yeah, we know that guy. He's a troublemaker. He's always knocking on the door. He's always knocking on the door. He's always here. Some of them agree with me. Some of them hate me, but they know who I am. And I say that, again, not to brag, but to illustrate. I've been doing it since 2000. But in all honesty, if I'm really honest, when I get up in the morning and shave and I look at me in the mirror and it's just me and me, I have to say, Lord, what have we accomplished? What have we accomplished? And I have to walk away from that mirror and say, you know, oh, I can write this down and I can write that down, but we really haven't accomplished a lot because they've learned to not listen. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was intrigued by your book and why I'm intrigued by folks who want to do something. And I've always been of the opinion either do something or get the heck out of the way. And speaking of that, we have another gentleman on with us, and I want to know about your responsibility and what you're – how did you get involved in this – with this guy in this book? Well, actually, uh, I'm a Christian patriot, and um, I was uh, – I, I love politics. My grandfather uh, was actually a teamster, and uh, he was actually uh, part of uh, the Dairy Union, Local 93, downtown Los Angeles, and uh, his name was Mark Whiting. And um, anyway – he was a politician, and he was there for 30 years, held that position uh, at Local 93 downtown. Anyway, um, I found out something. I, you know, I enjoy politics. I enjoy, and I love God. I love my country. I love my people. So anyway, um, started getting involved. Uh, a good friend of mine, actually in Santa Clarita, um, actually got me interested and started reading a number of things and uh, got getting behind better candidates, candidates that uh, had more of a constitutional focus on things and enforcing constitutional law. Amen. And so for me, um, I'm, I read my Bible all the time, number one. Number two, um, started reading things pertaining to the United States Constitution. And little by little, uh, getting behind the more of the independently minded constitutional candidates. And... Um, most of the time, it's of course, we live in a two-party system, and so a lot of people think that uh, these, these uh, the third party, I guess, people would consider them, uh, don't have a Chinaman's chance of ever winning anything. But in fact, you listen to these people speak, and, um, you know, they are very powerful people, and they have, uh, they have a genuine heart for this country and, and for the American people. And that's really what drew me into all of this. And then little by little, we've been just finding more and more candidates, constitutional sheriffs, and uh, constitutional governors, Amen. and uh, these kind of things, which Lawrence is going to talk about a little bit more, because that's what's in AR2, um, and how we go about getting this country back, taking this country back, legally and lawfully, Amen. and those kinds of things, um, and really leaning on our documents. Amen. This, this is a, a country of law. And uh, that's where we're coming from here. Um, and so for me, um, I've just been doing more reading. I have, you know, th this whole journey that God has taken me on has taken me to this point uh, through 
other pathways. Uh, that's how I got to meet Lawrence and um, Robert Newman and uh, Shirlene Nightingale and and fabulous people, um, Paul Schrader, yes, amen. Um, Michelle Ambrosic. These are all people who have been running for various um, seats, congressional seats, uh, state assembly seats, and then on up the ladder. Who was it? Um, I forgot her name. Orly Tates, running Orly. as attorney general. Well, Orly, you know, Orly was my attorney. Uh, what a lot of people do not know, and I'm going to bring this up again, and everybody's always saying you're always bringing up what you've done or not done. But, um, and as I said, I was a politician in 2008. Uh, that happened to me uh, as a result of a friendship with a man by the name of Alan Key. Mm -hmm. I, in all honesty, had not, well, I'd thought about it, but I nah, sort of dismissed the fact of running for office, especially high office. And I got to know Dr. Alan Keyes and was, in fact, on his TV program a time or two in Washington when he did a TV program there. Because I've always been interested in TV and radio and always tried to get on when I could and do my own thing and so forth. But anyway, I uh, uh, became friends with Dr. Alan Keyes. And, and in, in 2007, Dr. Keyes uh, called me up and said, congratulations on being the second vice president of the Southern Baptist Convention because I was elected to that position by the 15 million strong Southern Baptists. And I said, well, thank you, Doc. I appreciate that. I hope I can do a good job. And I always said, I know you can. He said, but I have another thing to say to you. I'm going to run for vice president uh, in 2008. And I said, you mean against me in the Southern Baptist Convention? He said, no, 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 no. I'm not a Southern Baptist. He said, I'm going to run for the vice presidency. I'm going to run for the presidency of the United States of America. And I almost said, you got to be kidding me, but I didn't. I was nice. And I said, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> and so we talked a little bit, and uh, he said, so I need you to pray for me. You're a pastor. I appreciate what you do. Uh, you've been on my show. Would you please pray for me? In 2008, I'm going to put my hat in the ring. I'm going to run for president. And I said, well, brother, I wish you well. I promise you I'll pray for you. And that was the end of it. And then along about that time, after I got more involved in politics and more involved in religious politics, I began to become very disenfranchised and disenchanted with the Republican Party. Now, I'd been a Republican since 1963. In fact, I worked for Goldwater in 1964 and couldn't even vote for him because I didn't turn 21 until after the election in November of 64. And in those days, you had to be 21 to vote. Well, I couldn't even vote for him, but I still politicked for him. So I'd been a Republican since way back when, 1963, 64. But I became very disenchanted and, in all honesty, very disenfranchised, even though I was an elected member of the Central Committee of Orange County, the most conservative uh, Central Committee in our nation. And I became very disenchanted with it simply because the party said, we're going to run Arnold. And I said, Arnold's not a Republican. Oh, yes, we're going to run him as, you know, so forth and so on. Well, the rest, of course, is history. But that's when I said, i got to get out of here. So I left the Republican Party uh, over that and some other issues. But I left the Republican Party. And uh, I went down and I registered as an independent. And uh, one Saturday night, Alan Keyes called me up and said, Wiley, I'm filing my paperwork to run for president. I said, well, you said you were going to, and praise God, I'll pray for you. He said, no, 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 I, I've got a problem. I said, what's that? He said, well, in order to pull papers in California, you have to have not only you as presidential candidate, but you have to have a vice presidential candidate to put on the paperwork. And I need a vice presidential candidate. And I said, well, congratulations. And I'll pray for you. He said, no, 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 I don't want you to pray for me. I want you to be my vice presidential candidate. And I said, golly, and my wife was still with me at the time. And I said, baby, are you hearing this? She said, yeah. And my wife was not pushy and outspoken like me, but she leaned over and she said, go for it. And so I said, okay, baby, we're going to run for vice president with Alan Keyes. And so in 2008, we did. We ran. Now, one of my suggestions, and again, I'm pushy, and so I made a suggestion. I said, Dr. Keyes, when we pull our paper, when we do our paperwork for 
president and vice president, I suggest that we attach a certified, bona fide copy of our birth certificate because we're both born in America. The man that we're running against, Barry Satoro, was not born in this country because I'm an old investigator. When I went to seminary, I worked as a private investigator. In fact, I was a private investigator in the state of Texas license uh, for more than six years. So I had investigated one Barry Satoro, and I found out that he was not a citizen. And so I said, if we submit our birth certificate, we can demand that he submits his. Well, that was the beginning of what's now known as a birther situation. I'm the guy that started that. I'm the guy who caused that. And as a matter of fact, if you go to the web, go to Google or anybody else and put in Drake v. Obama, you'll see the whole case. You'll see the video on it. You'll see the testimony on it. And you'll see we were kicked out of court. But nonetheless, you'll see that case. Now, the reason Drake was on there rather than Keys v. Obama is because of the mess that we're in and we're talking about today. I called up the Supreme Court clerk and said, hey, what do you got my name on there for? I mean, I like to have my name out there, of course, but Dr. Keyes is much more famous than I am, and he's running for president. I'm just the vice president. And they said, protocol. Protocol in Washington, D.C., at the Supreme Court of the United States says, if there's two clients, they must be listed alphabetically. Well, D comes before K, so they titled the case Drake v. Obama. By the way, folks, if you want to look at it, it's boring, but <laughs> big, thick case, go to Drake v. Obama, and you'll be able to get it downloaded, download videos, YouTube, whatever you want. Now, but I say all of that to say, again, we're caught up in this protocol, we're caught up in this, you've got to do it this way or that way. That didn't make any sense to me. Alan Keyes was a lot more famous than I, and it should have been Keyes v. Obama. However, our government in its wisdom said, nope, you're not violating the protocol. The protocol, alphabetically. Didn't make any sense, but that's what you got to do. Now, with that in mind, there's a whole lot of stuff going on in our nation today that you've talked about and you've talked about. Tell us a little bit more about what we can do about trying to undo. On the back of this book, it says, 1776. By the way, I had a daughter born in 1976, so she was our bicentennial daughter. We the people rock the world. It's time to do it again. I agree with that. These are the times that men try men's souls. The government is corrupt. And boy, is that ever true. Uh, many of you know Nakula Basila Nakula. Uh, who is the author of that video that caused all the stink about Benghazi. He's right here in the church right now. You can walk in the office next door and have coffee with him. Why is he here? Because the government's corrupt. Because they charged him with a stupid thing, uh, and they've released him to my custody. But anyway, the political system is dysfunctional. Amen. Both political parties have not only failed us, but they betrayed us. That's why I am what I call a recovering Republican. <laughs> I am not a Republican anymore. The old politics of the old politicians serving their old party have nothing to offer us but debt, decline, disrepute, and death. And I'm tired of debt. I'm tired of decline. And the older I get, I'm even tired of death. <laughs> but... Uh, we the people deserve better, and we will get it, and here's how, ladies and gentlemen. Lawrence, tell us a little bit more about what they'll find in the book. By the way, let me ask you another question before, you, uh, before I turn you loose. But there was one in here that I wanted, one chapter I wanted, I remembered I wanted to talk about, and that was, uh, let me see, the empty quiver, the empty quiver. I got a quiver story, that's why I picked up on okay. that, but tell us your quiver story. Empty quiver. Uh, and first of all, I, I hate to seem like I'm hijacking the show here a little bit. No, no, that's fine. But uh, I love I've talking been about this. Before, <laughs> <laughs> um, I love to talk about this. But the people out there, I, I hope you appreciate 
the rare and precious jewel you have in Dr. Drake and what he does and who he is. And truly I'll pay a, you in just a few. <laughs> truly a patriot pastor. Uh, and you don't find many of them with the courage anymore to say from the pulpit and everything else, every other aspect of his life, what needs to be done politically. And we just want to recognize that. He doesn't know we're doing this. So this is a bit of a surprise. So we, before we get on to the other things, I just want to make sure I get, have time to get this done. We have recognition of that. I'll read this to you. It says, the American Eagle Alliance proudly bestows upon Dr. Wiley Drake membership in the Order of Muhlenberg, who was a famous pastor yes, in the uh, American Revolution, through his unwavering and courageous commitment to rebuild the United States of America spiritually, politically, and economically according to biblical principles and the ideals of the founders, he has proved himself to be a patriot pastor. Mm -hmm. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you for your Brother, thank decades you. of dedicated work. Well, and it's just the tiniest little recognition. Thank but, you so much. Um, and I'm very just, proud of this. Just show here, everybody. I'm very so. proud of this, not only because I'm as egotistical as the next guy, <laughs> and I love to get accolades, and, and I'm the first one to admit that. On the other hand, I really appreciate it even much more than you'll even know probably until I tell this story. Uh, one of the things that I talk about from the pulpit quite often is this dear pastor. Um, and the reason is I tell the story as David Barton and others tell it. And they tell it far better than I can. But the bottom line is this preacher got up in the pulpit with all of his regalia mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, I wear my suit, but we don't wear robes in the Baptist church. But he got up there with all of his gorgeous, beautiful robes, and he got in the pulpit on that Sunday morning, way back then, and he preached a great sermon from Ecclesiastes. And Ecclesiastes basically says there's a time for happiness, there's a time for sadness. And it goes on and on and on, and he ended his sermon by saying, there's a time for peace, and there's a time for war. This is the time for war. And on that Sunday morning, Muhlenberg stepped to the edge of the platform, took off his beautiful robes, and laid them aside, turned and faced the audience with the Continental Army uniform in full uniform, and said, Men, today is a day to fight. And he led the first militia and the first group walked down from the platform in his uniform, no longer in his robe, but in his uniform, and led those men from that church out into the streets and later gave them what we as Baptists know when they run out of wadding in the battle. They had plenty of powder, they had plenty of balls, but if you don't have wadding, a gun doesn't work. And that was in the old days with those kind of guns. And they ran out of wadding, and Muhlenberg turned to one of his dear sweet ladies in the church and said, can you give us something for wadding? She went back inside and said, Pastor, all we've got, or the hymn books. In those days, most of the hymns in the hymn books were written by Isaac Watts. And so he said, use them. She began to tear the pages from the hymn book, wad it up, and give it to the soldiers to put in their rifles. And Muhlenberg said, give them Watts! Give them Watts! And they fought the battle. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to point out, too, Muhlenberg was not a chaplain. He was a trigger puller. Yeah, he right. was the commander of an assault unit, and he was in some of the most serious battles of the American Revolution. He That's was right. at uh, um, Valley Forge, and later he served in the very first Congress. So he had the guts, as did many other pastors of his time, to make a stand for independence and not to just say something from the pulpit, to actually get out, take the field, risk his life, and lead others in the cause of independence. That's the kind of pastor we need now. He also wasn't afraid of politics. He and his brother, who was a pastor, served in the first United States Congress. Mm -hmm. 
That's the kind of pastor we need now. They are precious few, and that's why men like Wiley Drake are so precious, because he's not afraid to make a stand. He's not worried about his 501c3 status. He's not afraid of, to risk his tax-exempt status. He's not afraid to cross that imaginary line that some people have painted saying separation of church and state. He's got the guts to stand up for God's America. Amen. And that's why we want to recognize him and thank him for the wonderful work that he has done. And I hope all of you out there listening appreciate a little bit better what this man has done. So, yes, thank you. Well, I appreciate this certificate. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at that picture, you will see Muhlenberg being disrobed. You will see that honorable robe coming off him, exposing the golden Continental Army uniform. He was a soldier. He was a soldier. And uh, I just hope I can be half that much soldier. You already have. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Now the quiver? The quiver. The quiver. Okay. I got a quiver story, but I'll tell mine later. You tell yours. What I, about the quiver? I quiver at the thought of talking about this, but uh, uh, for those who aren't familiar with archery, quiver is kind of the elongated pouch or tube where an archer holds his arrows. Oftentimes it's slung over the back, but not always. Well, back in ancient times when archery was a, a major form of warfare, it's kind of the di it's sort of the artillery of the time. That's how you had some could reach out and touch the enemy from a, a bit of distance. <laughs> Amen. So uh, you would want to start the battle, obviously, with a full quiver. And the empty quiver has always been a symbol of defeat and imminent death. If you were still on the battlefield and your quiver was empty, you'd had it. You couldn't fight for your mission and you couldn't even defend yourself. Amen. And I use this as the symbol of our two political parties right now. I think instead of the elephant and the jackass, they had to hold up, they had to emblazon an empty quiver on their banners because that's what they have to offer us anymore. They're done. They're empty. They have nothing to offer us but Amen. empty promises and more of the kind of defeat and disrepute that they have brought on this nation. It is time for us to relegate them to the ash heap of history, which is Amen. what your friend Amen. Ronald Reagan said Amen. we needed to do about the Berlin Wall Amen. and communism. So that's what the empty quiver is all about. We, the American people, need better than that. We need somebody who can come in with a full quiver. Amen. And the middle section of this book, uh, the second section has eight chapters. They're called the elements of the revolution. Each one of those eight elements offers a separate, discrete, and distinct thing that we can do in this country to fundamentally change it. And if we did any one of those things, it would have a huge impact to do all eight of them. That's a thermonuclear device. That isn't just an arrow. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, I really appreciate it. I have a friend that has an organization, in fact, a minister called Full Quiver. And uh, my quiver story uh, is a story for life. Um, a lot of people today are dealing with this whole issue of children. What's the best family size and all those kind of things that they have used and misused. The Bible had two quivers. Both of those words in the Hebrew are translated into the word quiver in English. But there was a war quiver and a hunting quiver. The war quiver had 12 arrows in it because you need a lot of arrows mm -hmm. for war. The hunting quiver only had six arrows in it because you only needed six arrows to hunt food. So when the Bible talks about the quiver, it said, blessed is the man whose quiver is full. And the word for quiver is not the hunting quiver, but the war quiver mm -hmm. of 12 arrows. So the Bible recommends 12 children are the ideal mm -hmm. number for a family. The quiver, God said it, the blessed is the man whose quiver is full. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I just praise the Lord. We only have about five minutes left. I, again, I want to give you the incentive. Please get the book. Get the book, and we'll let you come on and talk about it. Uh, go to the website, and the website is AEA, the number four, USA.com. AEA4, USA.com. Check it out and get more information. Lawrence, what else? What else? Scott, you got something? I'll go ahead. You can talk about this. I was just going to suggest to uh, Pastor Drake on the back side of that card there, we have a theme song for the Second American Revolution. It's called American. 
and we would like all Americans to go to iTunes and download this song. It's 99 cents. And uh, it's got, got some uh, marvelous words in it. And we are telling lots of people as we hand these cards out to we actually design these cards for the truckers, the trucking industry. Mm -hmm. But um, we're trying to say, you know what, America, it's time we unite. And we need to unite to fight. And when, when we say unite and fight, what are we uniting and fighting for? We're fighting for our freedom, our rights with our documents. Um, and this song tells us about uh, where this country is from and where we're going to be uh, going in the future. So we're saying go download this song and spread the revolution and uh, spread it to all your family and friends and uh, you know, spread this song around to everybody you know. Amen. And we want to get that song and we'll get it and we'll be playing it on the Wiley and Drake show. We have a song that I want to play here before we have to go off here. We've got a couple more. Wiley, we make a, okay, go ahead. Just, real quickly, um, if you go to do that, we hope you will because we get about 63 points so many cents for every download. And 100% of that is devoted to funding the revolution. It uh, goes nobody else, no, no thing else except funding the revolution. If you, are in the if you have the opportunity, if you're in the San Diego or Orange County areas or if you're inclined to travel even farther, we have a Patriots Training Day that we will be conducting this coming Saturday, June the 28th. It will be between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. on uh, Saturday the 28th. It will be held in uh, the Laguna Woods area, and the exact address is, is Restaurant 19, the Golf Pavilion. You enter through Gate 12. The address is one four. I'm sorry, two four one one two Moulton Parkway. That's M O U L T O N Parkway in Laguna Woods. And we'll tell you everything that's in here. We'll give you a great overview and turn you into a powerful patriot. All right. Give that address again and give the time. And folks, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to be there, but. Uh, we encourage you. Give the phone. Give yes, uh, if you want more information, call 909-913-7878. 909-913-7878. It's this Saturday between 9 and 4, uh, 24112 Moulton Parkway, uh, Restaurant 19, the Golf Pavilion. But if you call that number, you get all the information. It does cost $10. We're not trying to make any money. In fact, we're paying $13.50 for the, the lunch alone that accompanies it. So this is just to help reimburse us for some of the costs that we're incurring and the materials that you'll receive. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I would encourage you to go to that. Uh, unfortunately, we already have a thing planned, and I can't be there. Otherwise, I would be there. But I'm here to tell you, folks, if you want to go to it for 10 bucks, uh, I'll sponsor you. I'll give you a scholarship. Call me up and say, "Why? Well, I want to go, and I'll pay your 10 bucks." all right? Give me a call. Now, we're going to end today with this song. I'm going to stop that uh, because we're running out of time, but I don't want to cut it too short. Uh, I want to, we're going to go over a little bit, Jensen, so just leave us rolling. Uh, I want to give you guys an opportunity to uh, share anything else you'd like to share. You've talked about the training uh, tomorrow night, uh, Saturday night, and uh, anything else you'd like to share with our audience? 
Well, I'm just honored to, to sit here and to be a part of this battle. Uh, and that's what it is. And I want to emphasize, we use the word revolution. Revolutions don't have to be violent. We certainly hope this one will not be. Amen. But frankly, that's up to the other side. That's right. We will be prepared for whatever comes. But this nation must be rebuilt. Amen. We need to reclaim, restore, rebuild America the Great. Amen. And just as was the case with Washington and the others back in the mid-1770s, we hope it will be peaceful. It didn't work out then. But it did work out. Amen. We hope this will be peaceful as well, but we will be prepared for whatever because this country is worth it. Amen. Amen. Brother? And for me, I would just like to say uh, this is uh, one nation under God. Amen. We know which God we're talking about. Amen. Here, God of the Amen. Bible. Amen. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. Uh, and uh, in God we trust. Amen. And um, we're trying to unite the Americans and say, you know what, guys, it's time to take a stand. And uh, we need... All of you, we can't do it by ourselves. That's right. So, Amen. That's it. Need a full quiver. Amen. Need a full quiver. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what this show is all about. Over 10 years ago, my wife and I went away for a week, and we prayed and we fasted for a week to determine what would be our theme. We asked God two questions. Number one, God, do you want us to broadcast? And now we've been broadcasting for 16 years, so obviously God answered yes. But at that time, the both of us, I spent time in the Old Testament. She spent time in the New Testament. And after a week of prayer and fasting in God's Word, we came back together. And I said, uh, go ahead, baby. You share what you heard, what you read. She said, no, 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 you go first. You're the leader of the family. You go first. And we had, we had our first argument after fasting about <laughs> who's going to go first. And finally I said, okay, baby, you're right. I'm the leader of this family. I will go first. And I began to talk to her about I had read. Micah chapter 6 verse 8 and it said what doth the Lord require of thee and she began to smile and then I read but to do justice love mercy and walk humbly with God and by the time I finished that she was smiling from ear to ear and literally laughing out loud and I said baby what what what's, what gives she said let me tell you the scripture God gave me and she turned over to the book of Matthew 23 23 and she said, Jesus said to them, you've been very religious. You've even tithed off of the spices in the kitchen. But, he said, you left out the most important thing. Justice, mercy, and faith. And so we knew that would be the theme for the Wiley Drake Show. So ladies and gentlemen, come back tonight at 5 o'clock. We'll be back here again tonight with another show. The theme for our show is always, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with God. And I don't think it's coincidental that God put justice at the top. This is one nation under God. Justice must be done. That's why AR2 is important. That's why Quiverful is important. God bless you, and have a great, great day. We'll see you at 5 o'clock, live at 5 with Wiley. Good day, and God bless.